Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to give you an example of how bonds are priced. Now, the exact intuition of bond pricing is something that I've covered in a separate video. The objective of this one is to give you an example that is a little bit more realistic of how bond pricing works in the real world. And perhaps more importantly, I want to show you the different ways in which you can calculate the prices of bonds. Specifically, I'm going to show you how you can calculate prices of bonds using Excel. But first, let's consider an example. Let's suppose that there is a bond that has a coupon rate of 8%. Now, please remember that coupon rates are stated as APRs, which is annual percentage rate. And so if it says that the coupon rate is 8%, what that means is that the coupon payment is going to be 8% of face value, which is typically 1000 in other words, $80, which is going to be paid over the entire year annually. But most corporate bonds, especially those in the U.S., make their payments on a semi-annual basis, which means that the $80 is paid over the year in two equal installments. At the end of the six months, you get your first 40, and at the end of the second six-month period, you get the other 40. In other words, you can think of the semi-annual coupon rate as 4%. And so if you were inclined to draw a timeline, then one period here represents six months. And at the end of the first six month period, you're going to get 40, then another 40. And so because the example further states that the bond is going to mature in seven years, this means that there are a total of 14 six month periods at the end of the 14th period. You're going to get your last $40 payment and then also the face value of the bond, which is a thousand dollars. Now, the question further states that the yield to maturity on the bond is 10%. Please recall that yield to maturity is just a fancy way of saying investors required rate of return or the discount rate. It is the rate at which investors will be discounting the cash flows that they're expecting from their bonds. The other thing to remember is that yields, like coupon rates, are stated on an annual basis. So if you're looking at yields every six months, this means that the yield will be 5%, which is 10% divided by 2 for every six months. And so the price of a bond, therefore, is nothing but the discounted value of all these cash flows at the discount rate. In a previous video, I have explained why the bond pricing formula looks like this, where essentially this portion is discounting this $40 annuity at a discount rate of 5%. And then in the end, you're adding the discounted value of this last $1,000 at 5% as well, where, of course, the number of time periods over which you're discounting this is 14. Now, if you will do this math, you will find that the price of the bond will come out to approximately 901.01. .01. Note that this number is less than the face value of the bond, and this shouldn't surprise you. The rate of return that investors require is more than the coupon rate that the bond is offering, and in these situations, the price of the bond is always going to be less than the face value of the bond. What I want to do now is show you how you can calculate bond prices using Excel. Now, there are different ways in which you can do all these calculations in Excel, and I'm going to show you these ways using the example at hand. So consider in our example, the coupon rate is given as 8%. The face value is $1,000. The time to maturity is seven years. The coupons per year is two because you get a coupon payment every six months, so two times in a year. Now, based on this information, I'm calculating the coupon payments where I'm calculating the coupon payment every period. So notice in this calculation, I'm saying 8% multiplied by 1,000. This is the annual coupon payment. And then I'm dividing that by 2 to get the semi-annual coupon payment. Therefore, this number is 40. And the number of time periods is going to be 7 times 2 which is 14, because there are 14 six-month time periods in seven years. And finally, the periodic yield, which is the yield every six months, is again 10% divided by 2, so that's 5%. And so based on this information, the most basic way in which you can calculate the price of a bond is to actually implement the same formula that I showed you on the slide before, which, as you can see, looks pretty ugly. Nonetheless, this is something that you can do 
But why would you want to do that? Because Excel actually allows you to do something even better. There is something called equal to present value formula in Excel. And when you do that, it asks you what is the rate at which you're going to be discounting the cash flows, which in our case is 5% because each six months, your discount rate is 5%. It then asks you for the number of time periods. The number of time periods in this case is 14 because you have 14 six month time periods. Payment is the constant annuity amount that you will be getting, which in this case is 40. And then Excel asks you if there is a separate future value that you're going to get as well, which in our case is $1,000 because $1,000 is this one lump sum payment that we're going to get at the end of the 14th period. Now, what I have done is included a minus sign here and a minus sign here. This is just how Excel works. If I give all the cash flows a negative sign here, then the number that I will get here will be a positive number, which is, of course, 901.01. .01. This is the price of a bond. Equivalently, I could have said, look, I'm going to get $40 positive and $1,000 positive. This is fine, too. The only difference is that now the answer that will come out will be a negative. Basically, Excel says that, look, if you want to receive these positive cash flows of 40 every six months and then a thousand dollars at the end of the 14th period then you will need to spend and hence incur an outflow of 901.01 .01, which is the price of the bond so don't worry about this because at the end of the day what we really care about is the magnitude of this number and not really the sign but if you do decide to use negative then please do a negative here and a negative here be consistent now, it turns out that there is another way in which you can calculate the price of a bond in Excel as well. Now, if you look at this sheet, you will see that some of the inputs here are very similar to the kind that I just showed you. So, for example, the coupon rate is 8%. The coupons per year are 2 The yield to maturity is also 10%. But there are a few things that are different. First, there is something called a settlement date and a maturity date. So unlike the previous calculations where I just told you the time to maturity, which was seven years, this particular formula asks you when the bond was issued, which is referred to as the settlement date, and when the bond is going to mature. Now, you can make up some hypothetical dates here so that the difference between the two is exactly equal to seven. And that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm saying that let's suppose that the settlement date is January 1st, 2023, and the maturity date is January 1st, 2030. In other words, we'll have a time to maturity of seven years. Now, the other thing that is different in this formula is that the face value is not stated as $1,000. Rather, it's stated as 100. And that is because in this case, bond prices will be expressed as a percentage of face value. And so now the formula that you have in Excel, which helps you calculate the price of a bond, is actually quite conveniently called the price, P-R-I-C-E. And when you do that, it'll ask you what is the settlement date. You say, ah, great, I have that. It'll ask you what is the maturity date. You say, ah, I have that. What is the coupon rate? I have that. What is the yield? That's 10%. Great. What is the redemption value? That is the face value of the bond, which is 100 right here. And then finally, the frequency with which coupon payments are being made, which we know is two times for semi-annual. And once you will do this, it will give you a number 90.10. In other words, the price of the bond is 90% of its face value. Now, if it bothers you, all you got to do is say, well, I know that my face value is... $1,000. So 90.10, this is 90%. So this is basically divided by 100 first, right? Because it's 0 0.90 fraction of how much? The actual face value of the bond, which was 1,000, which is what we assumed. And so there you go, 901.01. .01. This is the price of the bond. And so this is yet another way in which you can calculate the price of a bond using Excel, which basically involves you invoking the equal to price function. And so there you have it, the different ways in which you can calculate the price of a bond using Excel. See you in the next video.